Hello my friends and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. In today's video, we will explore efficient methods of gold mining at large scale and small scale miners. In the next sections of the video, we will see the process of making gold jewelry by hand and by casting method. The manufacturing process of gold begins with the extraction of gold ore from the earth through mining operations. The ore is then transported to a processing facility where it undergoes crushing and grinding to reduce the size of the ore particles. Next, the crushed ore is subjected to a series of chemical processes such as leaching, where a solution is used to dissolve the gold from the ore. This is followed by further processes like carbon adsorption, where activated carbon is used to adsorb the gold particles from the solution. Once the gold is adsorbed onto the carbon, it is then stripped off the carbon using a strong solution, and the resulting gold-bearing solution is further processed through electrolysis or precipitation methods to obtain pure gold. After the purification process, the gold is cast into bars. Gold extraction using borax is a new environmentally benign method that offers small-scale miners an alternative to using mercury. In countries like the Philippines, where nearly 300,000 small-scale gold miners struggle to make a living, this method can significantly improve their gold recovery rates, leading to increased profits. Learning how to extract gold using borax is relatively simple and requires minimal practice. The process involves a few key steps. Milling the ore. The first step is to crush the gold ore into smaller pieces. This can be done using various tools, such as a hammer, mortar and pestle, or even a mechanized rod mill. The goal is to reduce the ore into a fine powder, allowing for better extraction of gold particles. The traditional method of using mercury for gold extraction is not only harmful to the environment, but also poses serious health risks to miners and their families. Mercury is highly toxic, and its exposure can have long-lasting effects on human health. Therefore, finding a safer and more sustainable alternative is crucial. Using borax for gold extraction offers several advantages. Firstly, it allows miners to catch more gold without requiring additional investments. The process of extracting gold using borax is similar in terms of time and effort compared to using mercury, but the advantage lies in obtaining significantly higher yields. Miners can expect to recover an additional 50-70% of gold using the borax method. Sluicing. Once the ore is milled, it is ready for the sluicing process. A sluice box is typically used for this purpose. The ore is mixed with water and poured into the sluice box. Inside the box, a carpet made of felt is placed. The purpose of the carpet is to trap heavy minerals, including gold, while allowing lighter materials to wash away. Another significant benefit is the environmental impact. The borax method is considered environmentally benign as it does not involve the use of toxic mercury. By eliminating mercury from the gold extraction process, miners can protect themselves, their families, and future generations from the harmful effects of mercury exposure. Additionally, this method prevents the contamination of water sources and ecosystems, preserving the natural environment. Washing the carpet. After the ore and water mixture flows down the sluice box, the carpet becomes saturated with minerals. To recover the trapped gold, 
the carpet needs to be thoroughly washed. This is done by carefully pouring water over the carpet while simultaneously adding a small amount of normal hand soap. The soap reduces the surface tension of the water and helps the gold sink to the bottom of the carpet. Gold separation. Once the carpet is washed, the focus is on separating the gold from the other minerals trapped in the carpet fibers. To do this, a simple magnet wrapped in plastic is used to remove any iron particles. The magnet attracts the iron, allowing it to be easily separated from the gold and discarded. Grinding and concentrating. To further concentrate the gold, the material on the carpet is ground into a finer consistency. This is typically done by grinding it manually using a grinder or by using a mechanical device. The finer gold particles remain on the carpet while the impurities are broken down and become easier to remove. Gold collection. The gold particles that have been concentrated on the carpet are carefully collected. A small piece of plastic or a vial is used to collect the gold. By gently scraping the carpet with a plastic tool, the gold is transferred to the collection container while the remaining impurities are left behind. Gold purification. The final step involves cooking the mixture of gold and borax in a clay bowl. Before adding the gold, the clay bowl is sprinkled with borax to prevent cracking and to ensure the gold remains secured during the heating process. The bowl is heated using a blowtorch or by controlling the airflow. As the borax melts, it helps to remove impurities and further purify the gold. After a short period of heating, typically around 5 to 10 minutes, the gold is fully purified and ready for use or further processing. Goldongo is a gold refining company based in Rwanda, Africa, that aims to add value to the continent's natural resources. Africa is rich in minerals like gold, silver, diamonds, copper, and other precious metals, but unfortunately, most of these resources are exported to other markets without any value addition. As a result, the continent is missing out on millions of dollars in revenue. Aldongo recognizes this problem and seeks to change the situation. The process of refining gold at Aldongo begins with receiving scrub containing impurities and base metals, but predominantly consisting of gold and silver. The scrub is then sent to the merging department, where it is merged using electric induction to create a single lot.
Before pulling out the melted scrub, a deep sample is taken and sent to the laboratory to determine the concentration of gold and silver. This melting and laboratory process utilizes the fire assay method to accurately determine the real concentration of gold and silver content. Once the scrub is prepared in the form of popcorn or flakes, it is sent to the refinery. Aldongo boasts a modern plant that ensures high performance and high purity. The refinery employs a chemical process known as aqua regia, which utilizes chemicals such as nitric acid and hydrochloric acid. The quantity of chemicals used is determined based on the quantity of gold being refined. The refinery's capacity allows for the production of 240 kilograms of gold per day, with a purity level of 99.99%. This section shows how CMG Link's jeweler make a meticulously crafted 2-kilo Cuban link chain created from over 2,000 grams of 10K gold. The chain showcases exceptional craftsmanship and attention to detail, resulting in a stunning piece of jewelry. Let's delve into the process of bringing this exquisite chain to life. The process commences by melting the 2,000 grams of 10K solid gold. The skilled artisan carefully heat the gold in a crucible, transforming it into a liquid state. Once molten, the gold is poured into molds, resulting in the formation of three solid gold bars. To shape the chain, the gold bars are then passed through a rolling mill. This specialized machinery exerts pressure on the bars, gradually transforming them into round gold wires of suitable diameter and length. The rolling process ensures the wires are uniform and consistent, maintaining the integrity of the chain's design. A piece of copper pipe is prepared to aid in the formation of the chain's links. It serves as a mandrel, providing a foundation for the subsequent steps. The round gold wires obtained through the rolling mill are wound around the copper pipe in a spring-like fashion. Skilled artisans carefully wrap the wires tightly and evenly, creating a continuous coil resembling a spring. This coiled wire will serve as the basis for shaping the individual links of the gold chain. Once the wires are wound, they are cut into individual pieces using the jeweler's saw. These cut pieces will become the links of the chain, with each link exhibiting precision and uniformity. Great care is taken to ensure clean cuts, preserving the integrity of the chain's structure.
The next step involves welding the individual links together to form the gold chain. The jeweler employ a welding machine to securely interlock the links. This meticulous welding process guarantees the chain's strength and durability. Before proceeding further, the weight of the chain is checked to ensure it aligns with the desired specifications. In this case, the chain weighs 2,165 grams, bringing it closer to the target weight of 2 kilos. This step ensures that the chain meets the desired weight requirements. As the chain takes shape, additional refinements are introduced to enhance its appearance and durability. A torch is employed to apply heat and polishing compound to the chain. The chain then undergoes a meticulous grinding and polishing process. The jeweler utilizes specialized tools, polishing compounds, and techniques to eliminate any remaining imperfections, scratches, or rough surfaces. This detailed polishing procedure brings forth the intrinsic beauty of the gold, resulting in a resplendent chain that captivates the eye. The chain achieves its final dimensions of 36 inches in length and 28.5 millimeters in width. The chain's weight, after the aforementioned steps, is measured at 2,165 grams.
The choice of 10K gold for this Cuban chain ensures not only its affordability but also its durability. The lower gold content makes it less likely to bend, scratch, warp, or become dented due to pressure or impact. Additionally, the lower gold content gives the chain a slightly less yellow appearance compared to higher carriages. However, the visual difference between 10K and 14K gold jewelry is not significant, and most people cannot discern it by simply looking at the color. The manufacturing process of traditional 22K gold jewelry is a fascinating blend of age-old techniques and modern methods. Join You Can Do TV channel on a visit to a renowned retail hub for jewelry manufacturing and in Sri Lanka. Here, we will have the opportunity to witness the craftsmanship involved in creating the exquisite pieces. The jewelry manufacturing workshop we visited was housed in a small building, typical of the establishments in Sri Lanka. Inside, skilled jewelers sat side by side, utilizing a range of hand fabrication techniques that have been passed down through generations. One could observe them hammering and shaping gold using hand tools, showcasing the time-honored methods still practiced in Sri Lanka. The jewelers relied on charcoal and hand-powered air blowers to create heat, both for preheating trays where molten gold would be poured and for melting and annealing gold. This technique, dating back centuries, showcased the traditional approach to heating and melting gold. Interestingly, alongside these traditional methods, electric furnaces were also utilized in the workshop. This juxtaposition of old and new techniques was a testament to the artisan's ability to adapt to changing times while preserving their craft. Throughout the workshop, there are various tools being employed in the manufacturing process. A jeweler used a lighter to apply heat during the polishing of 22K gold, exemplifying the resourcefulness and creativity in tool usage. The speed at which one jeweler hand-formed links for a chain using a hammer was truly impressive. Jeweler torches were commonly used to apply heat, while pliers played a crucial role in forming the links. The jewelers annealed the links, attaching them to the chain using pliers. The process involved precise handwork, highlighting the meticulous attention to detail required in traditional jewelry making. Piercing and sawing techniques were also prevalent throughout the workshop. These classic hand fabrication methods showcased the artisan's skill and expertise. It was intriguing to note that due to the intense heat, many of the jewelers worked shirtless, adopting the classic cross-legged position on the floor. Despite the availability of jeweler torches, some artisans preferred to use hand-blown torches, demonstrating their mastery in directing the flame precisely where it was needed to melt the solder. The level of control they exhibited over the flame was truly remarkable. The craftsmen, with their bare chests, sat on the floor with their legs crossed, immersed in the art of hand fabrication. Amidst this traditional setup, there was one area where a slightly more modern mechanized apparatus was used, a machine to roll out gold, wire, and sheet metal. 
However, the majority of the workshop retained the authenticity of traditional hand fabrication techniques. GRN Casting specializes in the casting process of gold jewelry, ensuring high quality and precise results. The casting process is a crucial step in the production of gold jewelry, where molten gold is poured into a mold to create the desired shapes and designs. Mold making. Using the 3D model or the jewelry prototypes as a reference, skilled mold makers at GRN Casting create molds for the jewelry pieces. Various techniques can be employed, including the use of rubber molds, silicone molds, or investment molds. These molds capture the intricate details and dimensions of the jewelry design. In the pressing process, the rubber molds containing the jewelry prototypes are inserted into presses. The molds are subjected to pressure, which allows the rubber to conform tightly to the prototype's shape. This step ensures that the resulting molds will accurately reproduce the original jewelry pieces. Mold Preparation Once the rubber molds have been created through pressing, they are carefully removed from the presses. The molds are inspected for any imperfections and refined if necessary. The molds are then ready for the casting process. Wax model production. To create the wax models required for the casting process, the molds are filled with molten wax, and once cooled and solidified, the wax models are carefully removed from the molds. These wax models replicate the exact shape and design of the final jewelry piece. Assembly and tree formation. In preparation for the casting process, multiple wax models are attached to a wax sprue, forming a tree-like structure. This assembly allows for multiple jewelry pieces to be cast simultaneously, optimizing production efficiency. Investment casting. The wax tree is then invested in a specialized casting material called investment. This investment is a mixture of plaster and other materials that can withstand the high temperatures involved in the casting process. The investment hardens around the wax tree, creating a durable mold. Burnout. Once the investment mold is completely set, the assembly is placed in a burnout furnace. 
During this phase, the high temperatures cause the wax to melt away, leaving behind cavities in the investment mold that are exact replicas of the jewelry pieces. Casting. With the investment molds prepared, they are ready for the casting process. The molds are placed in a casting machine, where the desired purity and color of gold are melted in a crucible. The molten gold is then poured into the cavities within the investment mold under controlled conditions, ensuring precise and accurate filling. Cooling and removal. After the molten gold is poured, the investment molds are allowed to cool and solidify. Once cooled, the molds are carefully broken or dissolved, revealing the casted gold jewelry pieces still attached to the sprue. These castings are then prepared for the next stages of jewelry production, including cleaning, polishing, stone setting, and any additional decorative work.